What is strategic management? I think it's we have to conduct strategic planning sessions. You know, the pandemic has forced us to a place where we've had to reinvent ourselves. We had to rethink some things. We've had to readjust. I can only tell you, I've been speaking for 30 years, folks, speaking in front of 25 to 30,000 people a year. At age 60, I would have never believed for the last 15 months, I'd be looking into a four inch camera, talking to people all around the world. Here I am in the comfort of my home here, in my studio, in my home, in the United States of America, talking to you here, and I'll be traveling tomorrow talking to another group. We need to reinvent ourselves. We need to understand that the way we did things may not be the way we will be doing them in the future. We need to conduct these strategic planning sessions. The next thing is we really have to have a strong mission and strong vision. Now, it's one thing to have it on the board. It's one thing to have it in the elevator. It's one thing to have it on the letterhead. It's another thing to have it on all the marketing material, the website. But it's another thing to live by it. When you truly believe the mission and you put people first, the mission of the credit union, serving people. When you come with that spirit of servanthood, we can make a difference. And we've found ourselves in the last 15 months, 18 months, depending upon how long you've been in a quarantine state, we found ourselves having to reinvent ourselves in the way we do business. I will submit to you this. The pandemic has forced us to a place we should have been a long time ago. Taking better care of people, being more empathetic, being more caring, more compassionate, having a more of an understanding heart, believing that we're here to serve people, not be served. I hope I'm talking to somebody there because sometimes when we get the title of leadership, the title of management, we think we're to be served when that really is no more than a greater mantle to go and serve others. The next part I want to talk about strategic management, it's a continuous improvement process. If you would have told me that I would be doing this in this format, I would have told you you're out of your mind. I love it when I can see the eyeballs. I have monitors all around me with lights and cameras and microphones, but I can't see in your eyes. But I, some of you don't even have your picture up on the screen. So imagine how we've had to reinvent ourselves and do things different to keep people engaged, to bring people in. That's what the credit union must do. You must reach outside of your comfort zone. See, sometimes we've been in this place too long. The pandemic may have forced us to a place where we should have been. The other points I want to talk about from a strategic management standpoint is we need new measurable milestones. We need things that are obtainable, achievable. We need to set realistic goals. We got to be honest with ourselves. What can we do? What can't we do? Be transparent, build trust, and build togetherness. I call it the three T's. Togetherness, transparency, and trust. When you build those, you can move people forward. People follow people that are going somewhere that they trust. My mentor, Dr. Bruce, for some 40 years, taught me this. And please, if you have something to write with, write this down. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Let's set some new measurable milestones. Let's take care of some people. The next point that I want to share from a strategic management standpoint is that we got to get people involved. We got to get buy-in from people. We got to get them to believe in us. Do you know when people lose trust, that's one of the worst things they could ever lose in leadership. When they get to the point where they can't believe what's coming out of your mouth because they're not quite sure they can trust you, you've lost everything. I would submit to you that it takes years to build relationships, folks, but it only takes seconds to tear it down. Make sure that you're building meaningful relationships and you're giving people this buy-in. You're giving people a chance to come in and to represent themselves and, and to share their vision and their ideas. Nobody wants to be in a place where they're being told what to do all the time and nobody wants to hear from them. You want to get buy-in? Use more of this and less of this. That's how people begin to form relationships because we listen and we communicate. The next thing is, we got to think beyond where we're at. I promise you there's somebody right now, some organization, some credit union, some financial group, somewhere, some right now, planning for 2022. They already know what they're going to do. If you're not planning to succeed, chances are you won't like your outcome. It's not that we don't like planning. It's just that we don't do enough of it. 
You got to you gotta think beyond where you're at. The key word there, the real key word is the first five letter word, think. 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 I would encourage the leaders here today. Spend some quiet time alone in the next 24 hours with a legal pad, thinking about your purpose, your mission, your passion. Thinking about your credit union, the people you serve, your team. Think about how we can do a better job. But the key word is think. Nothing happens until we think and then create. Write that down. Think, then create. That's when genesis of success begins. Nothing in life happens until somebody sits down and creates or thinks, thinks, then creates. So what else do I want to talk to you about from a strategic management standpoint? Is you got to have vision. You got to have vision. One of the books I read says, the lack of vision is the reason why people perish. And some, some of the books I read talk about the vision of the leader, that they see it before others. They're not the people that come to work criticizing, complaining, and condemning. They're the people that buy in. They want to be part of it because they care. You want to create a vision? Make it so big where it scares you. Make it so big that it's not obtainable just by you, but you need others. Make your vision so big that when you share it with people, they kind of step back and say, wow. Nobody wants to follow somebody that's doing the norm. Nobody wants to follow somebody that's just doing, you know, the average. There's plenty of those. We want to follow cutting edge. We want to follow leaders. We want to follow somebody that's doing something nobody else is doing. Maybe you can't do that in your credit union, but you can establish some policies and procedures and, and, some, and some different types of initiatives that bring about this vision. Here's the next point I want to share with you. You, have, you must develop what I call a truth purpose. Like, what is the real reason that you do this? December the 7th of 1989, I discovered my purpose for living. The two most important days of your life, folks, is real simple. It's the day you're born, and it is not the day you die. It is over. If you haven't done the work, you might as well forget about it because it's over. The two most important days of your life is the day that you're born and the day that you discover your purpose and passion for living. December 7th of 1989. I'm 60 years old. I only been living for 30 years because I was wandering the first 30. I didn't have a truth of purpose. I didn't have a true north. I didn't have a true sense. I hope I'm talking to somebody today that maybe it's time for you to go back to the credit union, close the door in your office, and ask yourself this question. Why am I doing this? Am I getting burned out? Maybe, just maybe, and please don't get upset with me. It may be time for some of you to step aside and let some new leadership take over because you're tired. Maybe because you served. One of the worst things leaders can do is hold on too long. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody. Hold on too long. Develop a truth purpose. Develop a reason. Develop a why. Know who you are and know why you do what you do. Well, this one is kind of self-explanatory, right? You have strong commitment. I don't even really need to bring this one up because I know everybody on this training today and on this Zoom call is, is, is committed. You're committed or you wouldn't even be here today. You're committed or you wouldn't be even taking the time to expand your horizon, expand your knowledge, to glean more information. I love when the last speaker talked about being relevant. Let me share with you something here. The opposite of being relevant is being irrelevant. And nobody wants to be that. Nobody wants to be the person that we just kind of look at and say, oh, yeah, they just got over there. You have outlived your purpose or you've not grown to the next level of your purpose. You got to be committed. You should be committed right now to personal development. That's the greatest commitment that you can take. It's one where you want to build you. Build you first and then build the team. That's, what we, that's, how we, that's how we strategically do it. We start with ourselves. I look in the mirror every morning, folks, and I would challenge you to do this every morning. I look in the mirror as I'm brushing my teeth and I ask myself this most important question. Milton, do you like you? Because if you don't like you, you're going to take you with you wherever you go and people are sick of you already. You have to be a good finder. You have to lift people up. You have a strong commitment. Yes, 
Yes, some days, believe it or not, I have a bad attitude. It's only for about 10, 15 minutes. I go downstairs, close the doors, get by myself, have my little pity party. I know I probably shouldn't do it, but don't worry, I'm, I'm getting better. And about every two, three months, I have to have one. But I don't lose my commitment. My commitment wakes me up. I don't need an alarm clock. I got a commitment clock. I'm committed. I'm committed to this client. I'm committed for what I'm doing today. I'm committed to leaving people better than I found them. I'll be blessed somewhere else. My blessing will come from somewhere else because I'm committed to the purpose of building people. I hope just one of you leaves today and decides to go on to do something great with your life. Stop being mediocrity. Stop living in a place called average. Move beyond where you're at and become stronger in your commitment. Finally, you want to get to a point of a, a good strategic management, you got to be flexible. I often say this, those that remain flexible shall not be bent out of shape. And there's something to be said when it has to be your way all the time, when it has to be all about you. I call that ego, and that really stands for this E-G-O, edging God out. When you get to that point where it's all about you, I promise you, you're on the downslide, and you don't even know it. You have got to the point where your head is so big and your ego is so big that it's all about you when you walk in the credit union. You kind of walk around with everybody to see you. Instead of walking over and saying, it's like, how you doing? How's your family? How, how's things going? What do you need from me? That's what leaders do. We set the tone. We set the example. We set the stage. Not bring me my coffee. Hey, can I get you a bottle of water? Flexibility. Flexibility in the way we deliver services. Flexibility in the way we're opening hours. Flexibility in the way we treat our employees. Some may be working remote. Some may be working in the office. Some may be working some days. Some may be working other days. Flexibility. Here's what it really takes. Commitment around that flexibility. No members, no credit union. So let's talk about some policy formation here. Let's talk about you know, putting a policy together. Everything starts when somebody sits down and decides we're going to put a policy on the way we're going to do things. We can call it guidance. We can call it procedure. But really, you got to participate in this responsibly. you got to figure out what's best for the people. You know, I bet you when you put some policies and you begin to put some things in place because of the pandemic, you have to really think about other people. You have to think about their kids, their transportation. You have to think about their safety, their welfare. You have to think about their health. You have to think about a lot of things that normally you wouldn't have thought about. Are we really looking at our policies now to make sure they're reflective of the time and the people we serve? Are we looking at our policies now with our members in mind? Participate in this process responsibly. Next, and I, I just want to say if you're a board member here, here's the first thing I want to say to you. Be proactive. Don't be reactive. Anybody can be a reactive board member. Anybody can sit on a board and when a problem comes up, give your two cents on how to fix it. But it takes a real leader to foresee something that's going to happen before it happens and put something in place to stop it before it happens. That's the true essence of leadership. Vision, being able to see. No, nobody knew where this was going to happen with the pandemic, trust me. But here's what we did know. There's always going to be a crisis and how do we manage it? That we do know. We should have a crisis handbook. Then how do we handle things? Oh, we've learned a lot during this period of time. We've learned to be more proactive than versus reactive. If you want to talk about policies, think about this. Let's think upward and outward instead of inward and downward. Let's think beyond where we're at and where we want to be. Let's think what we're going to look like in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Boy, that's kind of scary, isn't it? I remember when getting involved in this movement and mobile banking was coming on the scene. And boy, the resistance. And I remember just watching all the credit unions I work with, both nationally and internationally, try to embrace this new technology. And those that were in front of it, they grew and prospered. And some you had to drag, kicking and screaming along the way. No members, no credit union. you got to think upward and outward, not downward and inward. So let's take a look at another policy formulation I want you to think about. Don't put off these big issues. Don't think that they're going to go away. As the leader, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going right in there with you. 
for a rhino with you. We're going to go tackle this big issue together. And here's what. I'm not going to leave you out there by yourself. You always know I'm going to be there. Because leaders get a chance to show people just how much they care and their real leadership mantle, not when it's good, but when it's bad. Think about that for a minute. That's when we really get to find out what you're made out of. It's the struggle that brings out the best in us. When I'm on the mountain, I don't need you. I can shout the glory. But when I'm in the trenches, man, I need a kind word. I need a cold cup of water. I need a friendly face. Let's stop tolerating and putting off the things we know we need to do. They're not going away. Maybe it's time for somebody listening today to address these policy issues that you know you should take care of. Finally, I will tell you, boards should be unified. We've got to support board decisions. And when we make these policies, we've got to come unilaterally together. We can't leave the meeting talking about, well, I didn't vote for this. And I don't know why they voted for it. I'm letting it be known. That was not the way I voted. I got a problem with that. I got a problem with that because why is it the reason that you feel the need to do that? If you can't clear it up at the boardroom, there's no place for you to clear it up in the street. Please don't miss that. Clear it up in the boardroom, not in the street. The next thing when we talk about policy is, there's got to be somebody on that board that's going to be in, in charge. The chairman of the board, the decision maker. It all rests on his shoulder. He's the guy not getting sleep at night, worried about you. He's the guy walking around with the greatest mantle of responsibility, not you. And all he wants is support. All he wants is his other members, members at large, advisory committees, supervisory committees, different kinds of committees. They want support. I want to know you got my back. We can go through this together, but I can't go fighting you and trying to carry you. I need to bring you with me as we walk together. And finally, think about this. Don't do anything that you would expect to bring negative exposure or some type of investigation, some type of printing in a press, in a newspaper, or social media. Don't do anything that brings risk or exposure to the credit union. I'm telling you now, that's the kiss of death. We will lose trust for you real fast if you bring risk or exposure to the credit union. The first policy we should have there is where we're being transparent and we have people that we believe in their decisions and we trust them. So finally, leadership is you got to understand change. Change is inevitable. Growth is optional. It's going to be change coming. If you think this was something, wait till the next one that comes by. I'm preparing already. I'm putting more money away. I'm being more thankful. I'm calling more clients, letting them know I appreciate them. I'm investing in better equipment. I'm getting better here. I'm building this more. I'm working on this because what goes in here comes out here. What goes in here affects here. I'm working on this first. Because I understand change is just around the corner. I don't wish another pandemic, but trust me this. I will be ready. And I will stand tall just like I have through this. Because the greatest gift that man has is his ability to overcome. Show me someone that's an overcomer and I'll show you a becomer. Show me somebody that's gone through the test of the fire. That's what we've gone through. I applaud all of you that have come through this thing. Come out on the other side smelling good. And for those of you that we drug along the way, it's okay. But whatever you do, please, let the CEO of the credit union manage the staff. Please, don't meddle in that. You violate their leadership mantle. You tear their leadership mantle down. And I love the, I love the employees that say, well, I know the board member. Well, you know what? If the board member allows you to do that, there's a problem there. Now, if there's something we need to know that's going on, yeah, you better tell us. But don't bring me all that gossip. Don't bring me all that stuff that what you said, she said, he said, I ain't got time for that. You're not there to manage the staff. Support the CEO. Finally, here we go. If you're a board member, you're there to serve, not be served. And if you got those two confused today, I want you to put in your resignation. I want you to go ahead and tell them I'm done. I want you to go ahead and tell them you get me somebody else to get in this seat. Because if you're not here to serve, you got the wrong job. This is not a job where the accolades come and you get to stand up and be knighted and kinged and, and, and recognized by the prime minister. I'm probably not that type of job. You're here to serve. 